This is Salam Media, and you are tuned into the Mariam Makwanda Show. Assalamu alaikum. You are listening to the Mariam Makwanda Show on Salam Media. It is three minutes after 12 on this Tuesday, the 16th of February 2021. It's time for the hit list. Uh, today's hit list features Proline Mutlacha a former South African Airways flight attendant and reformed drug smuggler turned author and humanitarian. She's going to be sharing her story after 12 years as a drug mule. Uh, She knew that one day she'd get caught, but that never stopped her from pushing herself to make more money. She eventually got arrested and has since turned her life around. uh, And she is uh, here to share her story with us. Uh, Froleen Motlacha, good afternoon. Uh, right, uh, Florine is not on the line. Now we're going to wait for Flo- uh, Froleen to connect. Uh, and uh, in the meantime, you can share your comments in the comment section that uh, we are on Facebook, or you can send them to us on uh, WhatsApp. The number is 061-766-0355. Uh, and also, if you have any questions for Froline, you can leave them in the comment section. If you want to know if there's anything that you want to know from her, like what was her life like uh, being in prison for a while, um, being arrested in London, uh Basically, anything that you would like to know about her life, she's using this as a means to educate people, uh, educate young women and girls about uh, drug smuggling, becoming a drug mule, and also about domestic violence, which is why she started um, a foundation, and she's going to be telling us more about this foundation. Uh, And uh, we're going to be chatting to her, but uh, we're going to wait for her to join us in a moment. So today's hit list features uh, Florine Motlacha, if you've just joined us. Uh, Florine is um, a former South African Airways flight attendant and reformed drug smuggler. Uh, She also uh, wrote a book and uh, she turned her life around. She wrote a book about her ordeal and um, she also started an organization. Uh, She's going to be telling her story after 12 years uh, as a drug mule and um, I can't wait to hear Froline's story. And if you two can't wait, then uh, do stick around. And we're going to wait for Froline to join us in a bit. I think the connection is not so great, but uh, you know how it is. It is what it is. Some days uh, the network is uh, wonderful and connects so fast. And then on other days, it's not as great. Yeah. Anyways. So I was feeling under the weather yesterday, terrible stomach cramps. Still have stomach cramps today, but it's not as bad as it was yesterday, alhamdulillah. Praise be to God for that. And I feel like I've unintentionally food poisoned myself. (laughs) I call it unintentional because I, I did not know what was happening there when I ate the food that was sort of contaminated and because of that uh, had this food poisoning situation and ordeal um, so but I'm better now alhamdulillah shukran for that and just have to drink lots more water to flush out the toxins and uh, everything will be a for away so uh, Froline will be joining us uh, via the telephone so let's just do that and um yeah, let's uh, chat to her. Good afternoon, Florine. Good afternoon. How are you today? Wow, are you able to hear me now? I'm good. Thanks on yourself. All right, so you were a flight attendant for South African Airways. Um, how did you get into drug smuggling? Mary, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, hi. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, I was approached by a friend. Mm-hmm. Yes, the friend whom I, I was studying with in the university. And then she approached me with an offer. Mm-hmm. Yes, to traffic drugs. She was dating a Nigerian. Mm-hmm. 
and their boyfriend wanted someone working in the airline. Mm-hmm. And yes, that's how I started. All right. How how did your life change uh, when you became a drug mule? Obviously, money. Yeah. There were lots of money. Just uh, a love for finer things. Yes, I had lots of money. I couldn't control my spending. Mm-hmm. It's just a world on its own. Yes, because you are doing something that you are hiding. Uh-huh. Yeah, you're living with it. All right. And then it affects you. And and at what point in your life did you realize that um, you should actually stop what you were doing? Of course, every time you need the last one. Yeah. Yes. Hmm. But I couldn't stop. It wasn't as easy to stop as it was to start. It reminds me of uh, a series that I was watching, Good Girls, where these uh, three mothers uh, decide to rob a a grocery store and they just kept on going back and back and back and until they ended up in this life of uh, crime. But uh, you did eventually turn your life around. Tell us about um, how your life changed or rather the day you you got caught and arrested in London. You know, the the day I got caught, I call it uh, the, the Holy Spirit arrest. Mm-hmm. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, the, the Holy Spirit arrest. I was ready and prepared to be arrested. I couldn't stop and I was just taking a chance mm-hmm. because uh, I had a revelation that, you know, my days are numbered. So I was finishing off the last batch that was in my garage. Mm-hmm. So I was just taking a risk that being fully aware that I might not come back, but I just trusted on my instincts that you know what, no matter what, I, I can't throw this thing away. Let me rather do the last trip and see what happens. Mm-hmm. And uh, you did not spend much time in jail, right? Yeah. Now, uh, uh when uh, you look at this, uh, other uh, uh, people who have become drug mules and they sometimes, sometimes um, uh, have, to have to spend years, spend in, years. In, in, in prison in other countries or sometimes they are even uh, um, uh, killed because of uh, the drug, the, the drug smuggling, do you feel like you were lucky enough to get a, a short jail time? Of course, it made me realize that uh, there is a higher being there is uh, uh, someone who controls things. And to me, that was God. I really realized that I was very fortunate. But in my case, the person who introduced me to drugs was the one who ended up uh, in jail. Mm-hmm. She served the term. That's what people don't understand. Because when God now arrested me and I surrendered and I confessed, You know, the Bible says the truth shall set us free. I opened up and I asked for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And I promised God that I will turn my life around and I will change. I will leave my plans and follow him. And I did that. And through prayer, the justice was done. Mm -hmm. The person who introduced me to trafficking is the one who ended up being served with a jail sentence, but in a different manner. God worked, worked it out mysteriously mm. wow. in his own wow. way. Yeah, that's what people don't understand, that, you know, I used the power of the word that I did not know that my friend was luring me into the She brought this thing to me. Yes. Now, uh, your well, arrest uh, has uh, led you to open uh, the Favor Line Foundation. Tell us about the organization and how you are helping others. Yes, I raise drug trafficking awareness. It's about drug uh, tourism. Yes, most people, it's more on the Christian side, more on deliverance, because in my case, I, real, I realize that it is a spirit that you cannot fight. 
with only psychology yes. or therapy or going for rehab. That is why you start seeing people. It starts in the spirit. You start people going to rehab 10 times, 5 times. You know, parents don't know how to manage their children who are hooked on drugs. You have to treat the spirit man. That is what my favor line foundation does. And these people on the street, all this Malala pipe, drug addicts. Yes, I network with them, I connect with them, and I show them the truth, the root of the problem. That you know, it's not that a child would just start truck in trafficking drugs. You no, know, it is a spirit that needs to be cast out. Mm-hmm. That's what people fail to understand. Parents will be taking loans. 30,000 to take a child to a rehab. Six months down the line, they go back. But when they come to me, we start um, sessions, counseling, prayers, deliverance, singing, worship. The addiction that starts to lead them and they start seeing results. Mm. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, and uh, from your uh, from the prison bus uh, visits globally, you have identified a common problem. Um, tell us about these these common problems that you have identified, and how does it affect a person and their family, so that they can uh, uh, such that they get into a life of crime, such as a, uh, a being a drug mule. Yes, it shows that there 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 is a problem a foundational problem within a family. Mm-hmm. A person cannot just have the courage to take something deadly from Argentina to New York, you know, in their own strength. No. There is a component point somewhere. Like in my case, I'm talking from my experience and those who have been saying before no I've stopped trafficking drugs. No, there is a spirit that controls you until you deal with it. You know, I was being controlled from somewhere and I had to find out through prayer that what really happened for me to find myself in prison. But before I could not see it, I was thinking that I'm enjoying life. Mm -hmm. You know, life is nice. Life is good. I dress nice. I spend money. You know, anyhow, I um, I don't have stress. But no, there's more to it. And I had to dig deeper. And God revealed it to me that look at what happened. That is why I'm forgiving you. So when I confess immediately and I ask God that I repent, help me. I don't know how I got into this situation. Open my eyes to see. Immediately, my spiritual eyes were open and God showed me that that is the source of the problem and go out there and teach the world. That is how I got free from prison and it started inside the prison, you know, helping those who are there. Their cases were written of the left. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, Froline, please stay on the line. We're going to take a quick break, uh, but we will continue when we return. Okay. Thank Thanks. you. Spread the sunshine and make mealtimes sunshine delicious. Sunshine D, the versatile margarine and fat spread that is perfect for spreading, baking and cooking. Need inspiration? Visit nowwecooking.co.za. What makes Randery Jewelers the optimum place for your memorable gift? Is it our range of exclusive, high-end, luxurious jewelry? Or is it our master craftsmanship of all your bespoke jewelry needs? We believe it's because at Randery Jewelers, we know just how to make your special moments last forever. Whether it's for a wedding, anniversary, or just a simple gift to show your love, trust Randery Jewelers to make it special. www.randeryjewelers.com Make your moments last forever with Randery Jewelers, the family name you can trust. Kiki's The Taste with a Kick, our revamped exclusive restaurant and takeaway now opened. Kiki strives to serve you and your family with a wide variety of delicious meals. Enjoy our famous chicken, sheesh, burgers, pasta, pizza and many more weekly in-store specials. We offer Friday buffet and bright it with a difference. We cater for corporate functions, velimas and events. Perja facilities provided. Our exciting competition gourmet menu and new menu to be released at our launch. Visit Kiki's at 235 Matthews Mayue Road, Old Stemford Hill Road, Durban. Call 031-209-0119. Kiki's, the taste with a kick. Jamana. La 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 la. 
Connect and stay ahead with Salam Media. This is Salam Media coming to you live from South Africa. Welcome back. You are listening to the Mario Mukunda Show on Salam Media. And I am joined by our headless for today, Froline Mutlaka, who is a former South African Airways flight attendant and reformed drug smuggler turned author and humanitarian, sharing her story with us to raise awareness and let people know that, um, you know, there, there, there are other ways if you don't have to take up a life of being a drug mule or a drug smuggler. Uh, Frolin, thank you for staying on the line. Um, now tell us about entering Mrs. Universe essay and how uh, and, and becoming a semifinalist. How has that helped you with uh, your awareness? Yeah, it has helped me with a lot of um, charity work, going places, meeting all those uh, drug addicts, reaching out to people who do not know how to go about solving this uh, issue of addiction. Mm-hmm. You know, and even some of those drug dealers, when they hear my story, they think twice mm-hmm. about what they're doing. Yes, and the parents as well, they start to realize that, you know, the problem, you know, if a fruit does not fall too far from the tree, yeah, yes, uh, the parent will start to also check themselves that what is it that I have done wrong for my child to be like this. A child does not just go out and start getting addicted to nyau mm. you know, It is a foundational bloodline problem. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, oh. So do you feel like, um, oh, all right. <laughs> Sorry, I was just about to ask you the same question. Okay, we yeah. have a, a game we call Quick Fire. We am going to ask you five questions uh, and uh, you have to answer them as quickly as possible. It's just something light, uh, nothing to really stress yourself about. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. If you were the president, who would be your deputy? <laughs> <laughs> there is a lady that followed me from the day. Her name is Karen. All right. Yeah, and I don't know her. Yeah. What would your top priority be as the president? Raising awareness about the spirit men. Uh, what? Know, all this. Yeah. All right. What is your favorite quote? My favorite is what goes around comes around. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, your favorite book? My book, uh, and the vow uh, of a drug smuggler. You know what? This is unfair. I shouldn't have asked. I should have said your favorite book besides your book. <laughs> <laughs> yes, my book is. It goes to the root of all the challenges. Mm-hmm. You know, it has turned around a lot of um, people. The way the manner people solve problems. Mm-hmm. And yeah. uh, name three people or organizations uh, to follow on uh, social media. The United Nations. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, then. Um, what advice would you like to give to the youth, especially the young girls out there? Because, you know, um, th- we see these flashy lives on uh, social media and everybody wants to get a bit of uh, the action and end up going through a life of crime just so that they can be able to uh, live that life? Yeah, mm, what you hide is what kills you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What you hide is what kills you. The minute you take a decision to do something and you hide it and it doesn't give you peace, Mm. know that there is danger. Wow. Wow, that was uh, that was uh, it's, you basically just summed it up because it, it doesn't just speak to uh, living a life of crime, but also just to an individual. If you are hiding something and it's consuming you from the inside, then it, it's not good for you. Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, Froline, thank you so much for your time. And before you leave, um, what are your contact details if anybody would like to get in touch of you and the foundation? Yes, I'm on, my number is 
068-137-7180. I'm on Facebook and I'm on Instagram. Rolling Motaha. All right. Thank you so much for your time and uh, I wish you well in your future endeavors. Thank you. God bless you. Bye. Bye-bye. That was uh, Froline Motlacha, a a former South African flight attendant and reformed drug smuggler turned author and humanitarian, sharing her story after 12 years as a drug mule. And um, if you would like to contact her and the foundation, uh, you can do so on 0681377180. Her foundation focuses on uh, awareness, raising awareness around uh, drug smuggling. Um, and her being a former drug mule, who better than to share her story with us? And she just mentioned how uh, the lady who introduced her to this life was arrested and is is in jail at the moment. And if she had resisted or if whatever happened that day, she probably would have spent a longer time in jail. And um, uh, we, we've, we've heard and read stories about the people who have spent many years in jail. Some didn't even make it home. Are still there? Some are, are, and some have been have been killed. Have received the death penalty of their country because of the drug being a drug mule and drug smuggling. So, really think deep when you when you want to get into such a life because it's not it's not all fun and games when you get caught. Um, it might be fun the first time, you know, once you succeed and. Um, you know, you you feel the, the the rush of having to go through that, and you went through well, and um, you get paid for your efforts afterwards, and now you can splurge and spend all the money. Like Flo Froline said, that if uh, you have to do it in secret and if it's hurting you, then it's it's not good for you. So don't 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 think about doing such to yourself and to your family. So you can leave your comments in the comment section or send them to us on WhatsApp, the number 0617-660-355. We will be back after the break.